The transatlantic slave trade has been recorded as being the worst atrocity in the history of humankind. The barbarism and savagery displayed by the captors are second to none in the history of the world. Most of the slaves captured during this period were brought to work on plantations throughout the region of the West Indies from Trinidad all the way up the Windward and Leeward Island chain, past Martinique and Guadeloupe, to the top of the chain with Cuba and Haiti. The religion of these various tribes has many differences and similarities. Generally, religion is separated into three types of supernatural beings, God, the spirits, and the ancestors. The ancestors of the Caribbean descendants who were captured and enslaved between 1500 and 1900 came from three main regions, the Bight of Benin, Bight of Biafra, and South Central Africa. Fast forward to today, slavery has long been abolished. However, the mental scars that have been passed down to its descendants still carry the effects many generations after. People who were born in the islands of the Caribbean after slavery had officially ended have no or little knowledge of the tribes they came from. The curriculum in the school teaches very little about where their ancestors came from and their possible lineage. Today we will look at the top tribes where the population of the Caribbean came from. Fauna. The Fauna, also known as Fonu, is the largest ethnic group in Benin. Their total population is approximately 4 million and they speak the Fon language. They are highly concentrated in the southern region of Benin and southwest Nigeria. The history of the Fon people is linked to the famed Dahomey Kingdom, which is a well-noted African kingdom. This tribe is historically known for allowing females to serve in their army. The female fighters in Black Panthers are actually inspired by Fon female warriors, as in many other tales of heroism. A large portion of the sugar plantations particularly in the French West Indian Islands, such as Guadeloupe and Martinique, received disbursements of slaves that came from lands that were occupied by the Fon people. Many Fon people were also sent to Haiti and Trinidad. Descendants of those who embarked in the slave ships from what is modern day Benin can now be found in large numbers in Haiti, St. Lucia, Trinidad and other Caribbean islands with French influences. Mbundu. The Mbundu people, otherwise known as the Ambundu or Kimbundu, are Bundu people living in Angola. Their population is approximately 8.5 million and represents 25% of the population of Angola. From around 1612, Angola had been known for running a thriving slave business of approximately 10,000 human souls per year. This was due to the Portuguese Empire, which was the first Europeans to conquer them and set up the whole economy of Angola into a slave export economy. The Mbandu people of Angola were among the most enslaved Africans behind the Yoruba and Igbo. It was during the period of heavy trade with the Europeans that Nzinga Mbandi emerged as queen of the Mbandu and demonstrated a strategic natural talent for negotiation 
and trade. She took control after her brother died in 1624 and ruled until her passing in 1663. Between the 18th and 19th centuries, Angola became one of the main sources of slaves in the Atlantic slave trade. The Portuguese colony of Brazil was the main point of disbursement of slaves from Angola. Today, Brazilian culture is highly influenced by the Embandu culture. Capoeira, which is a popular form of martial art, comes directly from the Embandu people. The martial art combines elements of dance, acrobatics, and music. Igbo. Igbo, as they are commonly referred to, are people who live mainly in southeastern Nigeria. They speak a dialect which derived from the Niger Congo language family. Before European colonization, there was little unity among the Igbo people. They live in small, somewhat segregated communities like the Yubani. Inugu, to name a few. They are primarily found in Abia, Anambra, and the Imo states. However, larger Igbo populations can be found in the Cameroon and Gabon. Around the 20th century, the people became very ethnic-minded and dominated eastern Nigeria with a united stance. They tried to break away from Nigeria in 1967 to become the sovereign nation of Biafra, which no longer exists today. Igbo have been dispersed in moderate numbers to St. Kitts, Trinidad, Guyana, and St. Lucia, but they were sent to Barbados in very large numbers. Barbados and the Bight of Biafra slave connection have started around 1740 with half of the African captives arriving in Barbados originated from the Bight, meaning they were of Igbo origin. Haiti and Jamaica also had a high population of Igbo captives between 1750 to 1807 due to an increase in the transshipment of human labor to Virginia in the United States. Their expertise as subsistence farmers made them assets for countries with high crop yields for the colonizers. In Africa, they grew yams, cassava, taro, corn, melon, okra, pumpkins, and beans. A high literacy rate has helped many Igbos to become civil servants and business entrepreneurs in the decades after the Nigeria gained independence. It is notable that Igbo women engage in trade and are influential in local politics in the current day. The population of Igbo people today makes up approximately 50 million people or 20% of the Nigerian population. People were captured during village raids, while others who were incarcerated criminals with crimes ranging from petty theft to the killing of sacred animals were sold into slavery. It is widely theorized that about 60% of all African Americans have at least one ancestor who originated from the Igbo kingdoms. Bakongo. The Bakongo people, also known as the Congo people, are a part of the Bantu ethnic origins and can be found on the Atlantic coast of Central Africa. Their numbers are approximately 19 million. Currently, the Congo people can be found in the Republic of the Congo, Angola, and Gabon in large concentrations. The Congo people were once one of the biggest kingdoms in Africa. They were also heavily involved in the slave trade with the Portuguese. 
the trade of ivory and copper with the Portuguese traders in the 15th century soon was usurped by the demands of slaves. The Portuguese had initially started to purchase slaves, but as demand increased, they resorted to kidnapping. The King of Congo at the time wrote letters to the King of Portugal protesting this practice as not only common folk were being kidnapped, but nobles and even his family members had met the fate of the enslaved. After a period of time, the two kings agreed on the export of slaves for a fee per slave, hence ushering in the slave export history of the Congo people. Initially, Around 1520, this slave trade exported approximately 3,000 slaves per year. 30 years later, approximately 10,000 slaves were being transported per year out of the Kingdom of the Congo. Despite the people of Congo rebelling against this, the Portuguese army was commissioned and was able to suppress the revolts of the Congo people. Yoruba The Yoruba or Oya Empire, as they are often referred to, is approximately 42 million strong and can be located in Nigeria, Benin and Togo. The Yoruba people are mainly found in Nigeria and make up 18% of the population. The Yoruba's history goes back nearly 1,000 years. They bolstered a powerful culture presence in a region dubbed Yoruba land. Like the Igbos, they were heavily engaged in the palm oil trade before and even along with the transatlantic slave trade. In the 1400s, the Oya Empire, a powerful Yoruba empire, dominated present-day Eastern Benin and Western Nigeria. This empire acted as the brokers for both the transatlantic slave trade and the sub-Saharan slave trade as well. Trade was a heavy factor for the Oya merchants and they regularly traded their captives and criminals who were sold to the Dutch and the Portuguese. The Yoruba religion, otherwise known as Isis, is a combination of traditional religious and spiritual systems, beliefs and practices. It shares some parallel systems with the Vadon practiced by Fawn, Iwi, and Igala people. Yoruba religion is the backbone for a number of religions that we know today in the New World, mainly Santeria and Orisha. The origin of these beliefs is a part of Itan history and culture. Maya Angelou once said, you can't know where you are going unless you know where you have been. The ancestors of all people of the Caribbean have had a major role in who they are at the core. What is critical is understanding their journey and lessons learned. Thank you for watching. If you found our content interesting, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. We have even more interesting content coming. Remember, the hardest thing in life is to know. So until next time.